This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Tom Equals. He is the CEO of AIM Immunotech. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is AIM on the NYSC American. Tom, good to have you back. How are you doing? Good to see you, Robert. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So we last had you on here end of May this year. Now, the company's put out a, a good amount of news since then. You know, uh, going through to figure out, you know, I want to, I want to start with, let's say the most recent news after the, uh, our interview. And that was the update on the commercial launch of Amplogen in Argentina for the treatment of chronic fatigue syndrome. So can you uh, give us a little more detail there? Uh, yes. Um, uh, with regard to uh, Argentina, we've uh, shipped the initial uh, shipments to Argentina of commercial grade Amplogen. Uh, we received, we had to wait, uh, we had to first get an export permit from the FDA, which we got, and we had to get an import uh, uh, permit from ANMAT, which is Argentina's FDA. Now, Argentina is in the process of inspecting that shipment to make sure that it meets the specifications of the drug that was approved by Argentina. So uh, we're waiting for that uh, uh, testing to be finished. Once that's done, we can uh, begin the commercial launch. Uh, additionally, um, in, uh, as you may recall, Argentina's approval is the first approval anywhere in the world for a very serious disease called chronic fatigue syndrome. And we've been working on chronic fatigue syndrome for some time. We're the only uh, therapy approved by any respected regulatory body uh, for that disease. Uh, we're the only drug late stage in the pipeline with the FDA for that disease. And one of the things about that disease, which is extremely important now, is that many of the people that have MECFS, commonly known as chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, it begins with a severe viral insult. Now, we observed, uh, and there were peer-reviewed papers written uh, after the last SARS outbreak in China. SARS is the uh, very close uh, in terms of the viral uh, genetics uh, disease to uh, COVID-19. And, and it's caused by the SARS-CoV-1 virus, COVID-19 by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Well, after the SARS epidemic in 2002-2003, uh, a study was done by a hospital in Hong Kong of SARS survivors. And, and it leads to what I have called survivor syndrome. In those SARS survivors, 40% reported, this is two years after they were cleared of the virus, reported uh, chronic fatigue-related uh, symptoms. 27% of the survivors met the, the United States CDC guidelines for diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. So now what that told me is that because... COVID-19 and SARS are, are so close in the way they work and operate uh, uh, and affect the human body is that, is that we may be seeing a similar result with COVID-19. So uh, uh, in, in June, we announced the filing of a provisional patent application uh, done in a matter to secure our patent rights for use patents for chronic uh, fatigue that is induced by COVID-19. Now you're you're gonna if you look you're gonna see all over the media now. At the time we uh, did that patent, it wasn't it was something that was so clear uh, because this disease just started. But all over the media now, you're gonna see people talking about long-term effects of COVID-19. They call it long haulers uh, or COVID long. I call it uh, COVID survivor syndrome. And, and I have every belief that we're gonna see a second wave of uh, debilitating, uh, disabling, chronic fatigue related 
symptoms that were induced by COVID-19 over the coming years. And, and this is uh, where we have 5 million cases in the United States. If we're looking at a 25% uh, survivor syndrome rate, if we take the, the data from that original SARS analysis, I mean, that's a lot of people. That's over a million people with a, with a highly disabling disease. So we want to, uh, we filed that patent, uh, provisional patent application, and we're working now, you know, to get ourselves into the clinic dealing with the uh, COVID-19 induced chronic fatigue uh, uh, symptoms to see if Amplogen will be able to alleviate those symptoms similar to what it's done with chronic fatigue generally. That's actually a good transition because you just put out um, uh, some news release on July 6th and July 9th um, talking about that as much, about on July 6th that they, you signed the Material Transfer and Research Agreement with Japan's National Institute of Infectious Diseases and Shio, Shionogi um, to test Amplogen for potential vaccine um, uh, for potential vaccine adjuvant for COVID-19. And then on the 9th, about the clinical trial agreement with Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center, supporting the phase uh, 1-2 clinical trial of Amplogen um, com combined with interferon alpha-2b in COVID-19 patients with cancer. So tell us a little bit more. Like how, You, you kind of already started to allude there. So can you go into detail about these sure, agreements sure. And, um, and, and then how you're going to accomplish this? Well, the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, clinical trial uh, for cancer patients that are infected with COVID-19 is something that we're working on. It's, it's a little bit of a niche uh, space in terms of COVID-19 therapeutics, but cancer patients are at a much higher rate of having uh, severe symptoms and death if they're infected with COVID-19. Uh, it's, and this is a broad range, it's 500 to 700% greater likelihood, five to seven times greater likelihood. Um, and uh, because of that, uh, and because we know Amplogen from the many oncology clinical trials that are going on right now, um, uh, is well tolerated by cancer patients. And we know that Amplogen uh, in SARS, animal experimentation had a dramatic effect in terms of preventing uh, SARS infection in these animal, these were National Institute of Health animal contract animal experiments that were done in uh, 2006 and 2009. Uh, we've gotten FDA authorization to move forward uh, with a clinical trial to help cancer patients that get infected. That's being done in conjunction with Roswell Park. This is an investigator-sponsored trial, which is uh, receiving funding from the National Cancer Institute and from AIM. AIM is, is financially supporting this trial because we think it's very important. We've got, we've got uh, half a dozen important clinical trials in oncology going on. So uh, we think of these cancer patients as being our customers. You know, we're, we're trying to help them through their cancer, develop drugs that will deal with tremendous unmet medical needs in cancer, well, we, we, we want to, you know, broaden that so that if they're at high risk for COVID-19 and we can contribute to alleviate that risk, we want to be there for them. So that's why we're financially supporting this trial as well. The clinical trial agreement that you referred to uh, was an important step. We got the FDA authorization, the IRB approvals, uh, then that had to be reduced into a, a contractual agreement between Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center and AIM, which uh, with that being signed, uh, it's estimated that uh, enrollment will begin within 30 days. Uh, so so uh, it's a milestone getting the agreement signed the, and the enrollment of patients will be very important also. Got it. Now, and, oh, uh, sorry, continue. Well, what I was what I was going to say is is uh, you mentioned Japan and and uh, Shionogi. Um, that's a slightly different uh, milestone because it addresses uh, a, another uh, area where we believe Amplogen has potential based upon the tremendous amount of work that we did in influenza 
uh, with uh, intranasal vaccines to show that amplogen operates as a powerful adjuvant uh, in those animal studies. And then we did a phase one, two, uh, a principally safety study uh, on humans at the University of Alabama in influenza when combined with seasonal flu vaccine. And uh, in Japan, uh, we've signed an agreement with Japan's National Institute of Infectious Disease and Shianogi, which is one of the oldest and most well-respected pharma companies in Japan. Now, for people who aren't familiar with Japan, uh, and, and, and of course the Japanese market is smaller than the United States market, and, and I believe that Japan is, is trying to secure its own vaccine and, and therapeutic response uh, 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 to make sure that it's secure going forward. But this would be like uh, penning a deal in the United States with Moderna and uh, Dr. Fauci's National Institute of Infectious Disease. You know, the, you know, you know it's, it's, it's different because Japan's a smaller country, but it's an extremely well-respected uh, country in terms of medical research, and especially in the prevention of uh, uh, viral uh, respiratory diseases. And Shianogi is just uh, top shelf in terms of Japanese pharma. So we are extremely proud and pleased that they want to look at amplogen as being an important ingredient in, in uh, the research that they're doing. And we hope that we'll be able to enhance uh, the performance in a way where we can have a more permanent relationship with, with Shianogi and the government of Japan. I also want to remind everybody that um, one of the main reasons that we also had Tom on today is, and today being July 29th, is that AIM Immunotech is going to be doing a, a virtual presentation at the SNN Network Virtual Conference coming up next week. Their presentation will be on August 3rd at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you wanna go in and listen to that presentation, go to conference.snn.network and register for an account. And uh, you can also see it on the, our schedule page where there is the live link for the webcast. So uh, Tom, you, you wanted to add something to that? Well, please join us. I look forward to seeing you on Monday. We're very excited about what we've accomplished and what we've done, some of which I discussed today. But on Monday, I'm gonna be presenting a detailed explanation of the milestones that are in front of us. And, and what's to come to me is, is even more exciting. And uh, we're, we, we believe that AIM it plays an important role in immunology in the future. And it's part of the shape of things to come in Im immunology. And we want you to be a part of that too. Fantastic. All right. Well, Tom, where can our audience go and find more information about AIM Immunotech? Go to our website, aimimmuno.com. You can see it right there on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, right there? Oh, yeah, right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> right there. All right. Well, Tom, thank you again for joining us. That was, that was great. Uh, really appreciated the update. And uh, thank you again for presenting at our upcoming event. And uh, I look forward to our next chat. All right. Same here, Robert. Thank you. Thank you.